Hey, good morning, and uh, or maybe good afternoon, depending on when you watch it. Uh, Dave and I are here. And we're the this out. same height, thanks to video magic. <laughs> we're the same height, and also with video magic, we can get our requisite six feet away. Uh-oh. Okay. Good morning! Yeah. Well, now that Dave and I are sufficiently far apart, um, I do want to say good morning, really, to you, and uh, hopefully that God continues to show his presence to you through this time. Things are strange. I'll tell you what, I never expected Dave and I would be doing church this way. But uh, here we are, and I, I'm still confident that God is going to be with us, as he was promised to be always. Um, fair warning, because it's Dave and I in a room together, the jokes are going to be stupid. There are going to be puns. We'll get through it together, I truly promise. But we will start, as we always do, with the invocation. Um, which is really just a way of saying the name of, of our God that has promised to bless us and be with us. And we are beginning our time together in his name to say, we are your people. So we do. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We always continue then and begin our services with confession and absolution. And it's a moment where in person, I or your pastor get to say to you, God has heard your, your regret, he has heard your confession, your hurt, and your sin, and, and you are forgiven. It's kind of hard with you being on the other side of a screen. So I'm going to just bless you and, and say that the truth of your forgiveness is true, whether you feel it now or not. That even whatever's going on in your life, whatever we have done wrong, however we have failed, God still continues to bless us by forgiving us our sins. So, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, he was given to us to die, and for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives us the power to become the children of God and bestows on us his Holy Spirit. I, therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen. All right, we're going to sing. Um, I'm going to invite you, there is a PDF link down below, hopefully, if all the editing worked uh, the way it should have. And, but I also will display the lyrics, again, if all things go the way that I expect them to go, uh, below at the bottom of the screen. So I invite you to sing along. Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you Into the darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Back to verse 2. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. None like you. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher. God is for us, and if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Back to 
the chorus. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, one more time. And as we're running on a skeleton crew, I am also the lay reader this morning. Today's text for the message is from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 8 to 14. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful work of darkness but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, who is still the Christ. Amen. So as I warned, uh, you know, this is different. Hopefully it's still a a God-pleasing, soul-uplifting thing, Um, especially when we throw in some of our jokes and puns. You know, so you might hear Dave off screen um, as I throw them in, because, you know, I know some people just get sick of puns, but at a time like this, I don't think they're ill-timed. Oh. Yeah, it's okay. We'll all get through those together. Um, It has been amazing to see what the internet has has allowed us to continue to do um, in a time of basic shutdown. Never before has there been a pandemic where we can actually be so closely connected. And so you can get some real gold online, better comedy than I can bring. And I saw a tweet from some guy. His, His name is Andy Crouch, whoever that fellow is. And he wrote this on a tweet. I honestly hadn't planned on giving up so much for Lent this year. Now, at first, I thought it was pretty funny, pretty clever. But then a, I, I started to think about it, and I thought, wow, yeah, that's really what it feels like. I, I did not realize this was going to be our March, our April, and hopefully not much after that. It really was representative of my feelings. Maybe yours. I certainly didn't expect this would be our Sunday morning together, but how good it is that we have this connection still in the modern era. When we remember that God is still real, that he is still present, and that whatever weirdness and worry might come, for him is an opportunity to bring light. Now Dave just read from Ephesians 5 that uh, Paul is talking about darkness and light. That we are darkness when we are born. Right? He, he says that when we are born, we are against God, we are sinful, but God himself came into this world and, and has given us light. A light that is life for us, eternal life. And so he has shone on us and we joined him in the light and now we are lights to the world too for him. This is the freedom, right? This is that gospel promise that you and I, though we are sinners, we are forgiven, loved people by God, saved by him. So Paul gives us a reminder of that good news, which we need. But then Paul turns to our actions. He begins to talk about how we actually live as people of light, people of God. And the term he uses is walk, how we walk. We have always walked through life, right? Every day we have our walk that we begin and we finish. But it's become very apparent to me now that my daily walk has been disrupted that normal is just gone. I never noticed how I was walking before. It wasn't as apparent to me what it was like to go through life until life had the change. Yeah, we still have a walk right now, even in the midst of, you know, coronavirus shutdown. I'm just far more aware of it than I've ever been. 
You know, it's kind of like this. I've been a father for years now, and that's pretty normal to me. It's, it's who I am. But I've also never been forced with the proposition of spending three weeks at home with all my kids as parent, caretaker, teacher, husband, and pastor. You know, trying to be with kids all day while my wife and I still do full-time jobs. That's my walk. It's a new walk. But it's a walk that I notice more now than I did previously. And it makes me begin to question and, and look to God and think, as Paul says, am I walking as light, as good, as true? Maybe that's a question you have too. What does a new walk look like? What does it mean to walk as the light? It's similar to how we've had Lent for thousands of years. But like that tweet said earlier, we didn't expect Lent to really come so intensely to us. Lent is here in a different way. You know, usually it's, ah, no candy or donuts for 40 days. I can pull that off. Well, Lent this year came and said, how about no more social life? You know, usually I give up soda. I've successfully given up soda unsuccessfully for like 20 years now. But Lent came this year and said, how about no more worship together? At least not in the same room. It makes me step back to see Lent and this current situation in a whole new light. And what I see, and I hope you do, is we find God has promised that he is still right here. He's with me. Me and Dave right now in the sanctuary at church, but he is especially with you at home. If you're in your PJs, he's still there. Still with us. Still calling all of us to be his saved children. And to remember that we walk as people of light. Even when it means our walk is something we've never done before. Life during the coronavirus shutdown could honestly just be horrible. We could make that decision. We could let it be that. And I bet a lot of people will around the world. We could let it be a time where we separate completely and we let our relationships suffer rather than using these, these modern conveniences that give us so much freedom to be the people of God. We could let our connection to God himself suffer, seeing this as a temptation or to be a break from God and church, from chore. We could let it be a time when we decide that our walk doesn't need to be a walk of light and truth. And we could walk however we wanted, and most people won't notice. Or, this is an opportunity from God for this world and us with it to be brought more deeply into the brightness of his glory, starting with us. I was talking to one pastor before, you know, we had to kind of shut down and uh, he said that this would be a great Lent for a spiritual revival starting right here in our churches, in our hearts. Lent has historically always been a season about renewal of faith, diving into God through scripture and prayer, giving of time and, and all that we have. And it's only more recently become a season where we give something up. It was always more about adding light. And yes, sometimes removing darkness in our spiritual life. And with that, with our eyes open to change and, and change forced upon us, what an incredible opportunity we have to see our walk and to realize we can still even now walk as children of light. God's showing us an opportunity and he's calling us saying, you are my child who I have saved and redeemed. Walk with me. We could even say that God has given us a gift with this time by forcing us to see that we can't do life alone, not without him and not without others. He's reminding us that we are people of light and we need to be fed and connected to his light, Jesus Christ. Showing us not only that we need him, but reminding us that he is still present in our actions, however different they may be. This is a gift from God. This Lent calling us to turn to him more. Because Lent this year wasn't up to us to decide what we're going to change. God decided for us. He brought Lent into our lives. 
And so instead of a break or, or just a deep frustration, I think this is a time for us to look to the light, to follow Jesus Christ even more, even through strange and weird times, so that his light would shine more brightly in us, but even as darkness seems like it's setting over the world, it would shine more brightly into our communities and our neighborhoods. This is an opportunity to be the church of Jesus Christ and to be his disciples by continuing to read his scripture, by continuing to trust in God with bold prayers and seeking to give of our time and ourselves and our stuff so that we can still show the world that, yeah, even though that stuff can feel fleeting and this is scary, we continue to trust in our present God. It's a time, as Paul said, to discern what is pleasing to the Lord and to walk in his spirit. Right now, we know the promise of God's Holy Spirit remains with us. His light shines through us. This is truly God's time to bring light into darkness. Last thing I want to share with you is, is that really how much it's been a blessing to, to have that connection over the internet through this whole thing. Um, yeah, on one hand, the internet is negative because it can give me unbearable puns, which with to bother Dave. But also, it's a time to stay connected and to hear from those people who are going through something so similar and still looking to God. And for me, that's actually been one of my friends from seminary. He is an incredibly intelligent dude named Andrew R. Jones, and we'll link his blog down below. Um, you don't have to support him. It's his Patreon account, but you can just go and read the whole blog. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But I'm going to read a bit of it because it really sums up, I think, this whole Lent being brought to us and God giving us an opportunity to see him more clearly. Andrew writes this. A few weeks ago, Ash Wednesday marked the beginning of Lent, which is a penitential season of 40 days related to Jesus' fasting in the wilderness for 40 days before being tempted by Satan. It is common during Lent to fast from self-chosen things. People often give up a certain food or activity as a way of saying, I rely on you, God, more than this thing. Lent is a time for us to refrain, to engage in self-discipline so that anything that might become an idol would be put in its proper place and thereby keeping God in his proper place, the focus of our attention. Today, billions of people worldwide are fasting from things that we did not choose. Worldwide, people are restricted from going to work, to school, to restaurants, sporting events, and a whole host of other things. Lent came for us. It's been imposed on us. And a lot of people are not happy about this. A lot of people are still scoffing at the idea that we have lost some of our usual freedoms. But also a lot of people are realizing that our true idols did not exist in just candy or soda or whatever else we normally give up for Lent. He writes, For some, myself the foremost, the idol is routine. Knowing that the status quo is gone, each day brings with it immense and unknown challenges, and it can drain energy so quickly. There are unforeseen circumstances that require massive amounts of flexibility, and the inner routine that gives us peace has been obliterated. Lent came for us. For some, myself the foremost, the idol is control. Not being able to know what is going on is draining energy quickly, and the helpless feeling of not being able to make choices is massively challenging. More than that, we don't know if our choices are going to prove wise or foolish, making the choosing even more difficult. Lent came for us. He says that even some people in essential industries like healthcare, we allow them to go to work, but most of us are stuck at home still missing the contact, the hugs and, and, and high fives or handshakes that we're so used to. Just another tangible reminder that Lent came for us. For the next three weeks and inevitably beyond, we're going to give up life as we know it for a time. We will be on a fast, not from chocolate or meat, but from normalcy. And in the end, what this Lent may ultimately do is remind us what is most necessary in our lives. Jesus Christ. Lent is here, but Easter and resurrection will still come. 
might not come on time, we might not celebrate in the way we normally do, and it might come after we've dealt with more grief and tears than we wish to bear. But just as Lent has come, Easter will come, and it will come for us. Amen. All right, I think we've got close to six feet, but now I'd like an opportunity to confess our faith, and and you as well, Um, using the words of the Apostles' Creed, which we'll have on the screen. This is a reminder of the whole biblical story, the story of God to save us, to be with us, and to give us eternal salvation. So I invite you to join with us. I I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we'll sing together, Beautiful Savior. Take a moment for prayer, and if you would please bow your head and we'll pray together. Dear God, you've sent Lent to us in a way that we did not expect, in a way that we didn't expect to be challenged in in our daily lives, in in faith, in our society, and in our church. But we know you are present, that you are here, and that your promise never fades for us that we are your people, that we have your blessing and eternal life with your Son, Jesus Christ. And so for that, we thank you and we ask you to form us. Make us more and more beacons of light, reflecting your Son in our hearts and in our lives, that through this dark time, more people would come to know you. Lord, we lift up to you all of those people who are hurting, who are mourning, who are worried, who aren't sure what tomorrow looks like or 
or where the next paycheck will come from. Lord, we ask you to be with everyone in this time. That despite our lack of understanding, we can lean on you and the fact that you are already in tomorrow and you are in the next day and it's yours. We ask you also especially to be around the world with the various leaders and protectors of people. That they would diligently do their job and, and do what is needed to protect so many lives and so many well-beings. Please be with them all and guide them that their job would be done efficiently and effectively. For these, Lord, and all other things, we pray to you. Amen. If you would please join me as we pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as we continue this day, continue this week, this month, and this Lent, know that you are going with God's blessing, which I offer you now. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. And lastly, for kind of a ministry moment to keep our normal terms, I guess, Fortunately, there's not a lot going on. I encourage you to stay safe, to stay in your home as much as you can, and let's pray for some good weather so we can at least get outside. Uh, if there's anything you need, please contact the church and myself. The info will be down below, or you can always go to our website, lcol.org, and we've got everything on there that we can think of that might help you. Contact your elders, and uh, let's see if together, with our Lord still with us, we can make this an incredible opportunity, not just for LCOL, but for the whole world. So with that, we, we do ask you for your support. Normally, we would receive an offering, and, and I know times are, are potentially going to be tough for many of us. But God calls us to pray, to give, and to read a scripture. And so I, I still ask that you would do that. Um, we have the info online at our website on how you can give online or mail in a check. And also, as far as the other two really important things reading scripture and praying, um, we do invite you to, if you haven't already, sign up for our, our mailing list at lcol.org. There's a link there you can put in your info. And what that will get you during this time is I have committed and have enjoyed making them so far, uh, daily devotions and prayers. That way we can all stay connected together and hopefully we all, myself included, can be encouraged in staying in God's scripture when it could be an easy time to take a nap. I encourage you with that. I hope God continues to bless you, and if there's anything you need, let us know. Thanks.